Uh, welcome everyone to this conversation about resources with Salim Anaji from Tiznit and Col Claudia Rodriguez from Mexico City. Uh, my name is Colin Kifa and the other facilitator is Nora Martin. First, we are going to introduce both architects. Salim Anaji is a French Moroccan architect and anthropologist with a keen interest in the preservation and the rehabilitation of historic buildings in South Morocco where she practiced. By pairing environmental performance with cultural identity, but also the adaptation of ancestral technique to current programs, she gives heritage a present day anthropological dimension. It guarantees the preservation of traditional vernacular in the long term, but also its reintegration into, into contemporary practice. Welcome to both, to EPFL. Uh, so now we can pass the word to the architect. They are going to do a small presentation of their work. Uh, Salima, if you want, you can start. Yes, I can. Okay, I start. Thank you, thank you so much for the very, for the invitation. Real honor, Professor, thank you. Thank you for, for the sharing your vision of the world tour of architecture. So, and thank you, so Colleen, I have the nostalgia, Colleen, <laughs> about um, a long time now. Um, I have choice to present you a designing commons as an ethic of preservation, not conservation, preservation uh, for the resources. Defending architecture as a common good means questioning not only the building itself, but also the social condition of its construction, spatial practices, social use, and attachment to place. In these time, times of growing inequality, architects are increasingly torn between two paths, turning to the ostentations, source of prestige, comfortable income, or defending, on the contrary, what makes the common good, allowing a just measure of architectural production, often modest, turn towards others. The temptation of architectural enclosure of the spectacular building for the benefit of a small number of individuals in a territory enclosed to indesirable is a constant practice of our profession. Beyond the technical gesture, any building must therefore be placed in its, its territorial, social, and environmental context. This raises question that go much deeper than those of prestige and aesthetic performance, that of the durability of the quality of living together over time. Indeed, the architectural object must be true of in a long time and in an open social context in order to better define its impact to the possibilities it generates. Any individual action has collective repercussion and therefore the choice to favor certain material in certain places for certain uses automatically impacts all environmental, territorial and social balances. For us, the oasis appears to be a privileged place of observation for a long time. This entity has sniffed a capacity to deal collectively with constraints. Indeed, the technical and environmental condition imposed a collective effort to build a, re a resilient life together. The house of the garden could only be sustainable if they were built next to other houses and garden, tooth creating a singular urban situation, a height density 
in the middle of the desert immensity. Humanity then appeared to be agglomerated on the age of inhabitable world. It had succeeded in achieving a sedentary lifestyle in the middle of nomadic territories. It had managed to organize the management of water scarcity, combining plants and building to cope with climatic excesses, summer heat and winter cold. The oasis provide a lesson in collective resilience where builder and farmer was one. However, oases are by no means isolated, but are integrated into vast commercial network where people, goods, and know-how circulate linking Africa, Europe, and Asia for thousands of years. Today, however, this habitat is dying. Oasis technologies and institutions have, be, have been disqualified by the discourse on modernity imposed by the colonial authorities and by the new independent state, architect, engineer, planners, then multiple the projects by opposing all heritage conservation in favor of hurried modernism. Faced with the collapse of the oasis habitat, what should be done? Accept the inevitable disappearance before our eyes as a necessary historical stage of modernization? But isn't this discourse of the inevitable an ideological discourse? aiming to make decision maker less responsible. Why should a way of life based on adaptation to contract for thousands of years suddenly disappear? What choice have been made? Should we not question other elements? The denial of democracy, the denial of culture. Have the society not undergone a series of shocks? Colonization, demographic, growth favoring the affirmation of new political administrative elites with divergence aims to new decision make makers exogenous experienced in the ology of modern in the ology of modernity and above all eager to organize a new dynamic of France or corruption pre prevent any collective definition of the well-being of oasis community beyond the landscape, the question of a complete dynamic of a society doesn't the so-called individual demand high, extremely violent relationship of domination to him to prevent any collective capacity to build a shared well-being. Because behind the order of the built, built environment, but also of the vegetation lies a way of doing things the way together, a transmission of know-how, a concern for the collective, a fear of the unexpected. But how can this legacy be passed on? How can be how can we pass on the knowledge accumulated over centuries through long reflection on adaptation and the economy of means when today the propagandists of modernity are in emancipating themselves from the commonplace with the help of exogenous technology, fossil fuel, and often ill-gotten currency. How can a trend be reversed when the purchase of social peace is achieved by, by authorizing hasty construction, poor housing for the poor, and the living down of construction models. How can we offer quality public space when historic public space are left to be abandoned or taken over by the most opportunistic? How can a resilient habitat be maintained in a context of massive destruction of the built environment and a profound disregard for so-called traditional 
constriction model. However, there is another way, that of the constructive arena, becoming a link in the production chain to propose and defend another way of doing things together. The inevitable form then turns out to be nothing more than the product of converging forces anxious to standardize and freeze the built environment in the name of a supposed modernity. This modernity can take to be to the mantle of Western, Eastern technical or religious modernity, but it's never more than an empty shell erasing what had preceded in it in order to extract at each of these actors appears to develop of discourse and ingenious architecture in order to better assert their own economics or political power. The so-called modernity remains inspired above all by the possibility of diverting a short-term surplus value. Building a new horizon of dignity for me. It has become increasingly urgent to propose a new path that links preservation and improvement of living condition in Morocco's situation. This requires first of all recognition of the quality of tangible or intangible heritage pro project to what could be called an horizon of dignity, the dignity of living, decay of this, the architecture of well, quality of projects that reflect a real reflection on public space and individual comfort, and at the same time, the mobilization of existing resources by adapting inherited local skills to contemporary needs. It is not a question of denying the dynamics of modernity, but rather of proposing a correction of this modernity before defining the condition of the new regulation, a logic of freedance, recuse, low tech, or the growth does not mean withdrawal or social retreat. Indeed, no one question to need for education or health system capable of circulating knowledge to improve living condition. However, quantitative measuring, measurement, the obsession with money as the only quantitative standard and development programs based on financial mana alone obscure more complex realities and can ultimately result in a real social and environmental disaster. The architect himself is one of the main links the deployment of this modernity with a width of standard new material, expensive commission that guarantee comfortable fees. His hubris, hubris is even maintained by a taste of, for distinction. He dreams of proposing a social change that would be equal to this excess, building cities, building public building <clears throat> in the discreet charm of the Grand Eloquence Commission that wants to think of a radian technicist future that is too often dystopian. It's a dystopian. Unfortunately, these excess come up against the reality of growing social inequalities, deteriorating living condition, and a constant need to call an additional ecological resource with no guarantee to of improving the living condition in the habitant over time. It's essential to think about material and architecture in a systemic way. All material have a cost about environment during their production, implementation, maintenance, and above all their destruction. The urban utopias which dominated in the 20th century 
and which are still dominant in our century, and which continues atmospheric pollution where they are concentrated around large cement um, and still work on the habitat itself, increasing <clears throat> cost of air conditioning or other complementary process. In the same way, any architectural device in place a specific use, but the grandiloquence of the projects induce a selection effect to the benefit of the most fortunate at the expense <clears throat> of the most dispute, often living in, in the impact place. So in my work, I, I, I have do and I continue to do a necessary articulation and real reflection and research and action. The action for me is very, very important, more important <laughs> than the other uh, things. And now we work with uh, women and uh, children to try to change mentality and order. It will be a question of developing, illustrating, and completing the subject by example around concrete case you have seen. Um, the objective is not to rely it's not the nostalgia or I don't know, but it's a single cause to make sense, to, to, to make it possible to demonstrate how with method and conviction it's possible to institute progressively social change in an entire region. It is, it is always time to act. Thank you very much. Thank you to you, Lima.